When it comes to generation of hydropower, the image of a mega hydropower plant like the Owen Falls Dam on River Nile comes to mind. VS Hydro, a Sri Lankan company, has gained a remarkable reputation at home and abroad in the construction of mini hydropower dams. VS Hydro is constructing or in the process of constructing mini hydropower plants in three locations in Uganda. In western Uganda, in Kamwenge and Kilembe, and in the east in Kapchora district. The Mpanga Hydro Power Plant is located in Kamwenge district, 300 kilometers from Kampala, the capital city of Uganda. The Mpanga Hydro project will have installed capacity of 18 megawatts and will generate 75 million units of electricity in a year and construction is to cost 25 million US dollars. The facility is being built with the Ugandan government's initiative to provide electricity to the country along with FMO Bank of Netherlands, DEG from Germany and FinFund of Finland as the project sponsors. A hydropower plant is divided into five sections, the weir, headrest canal, four bay, penstock and the powerhouse. The weir is where water is taken from the river by diverting it into a channel known as the headrest canal, which is located on the right bank of the river Mpanga. The weir will be 10 meters high and 100 meters wide. It will be reinforced with a concrete mix of rock fill. I am Tintake, I am the assistant engineer for this site. And this is behind that you can see that that is called weir. This weir is we are constructing to the, uh, collect that this water and send through this channel, channel. And this behind me that you can see that uh, another structure that is called intake. That's intake is the uh, first, that first thing is to collect, send this water. And th th this weir is uh, about 100 meters long and it is height is 9 meter and this is this we is called uh, buttress wall and th that is we are first we construct these walls and we are backfilling some some stones and we are take that stability of this weir and th that you can see that uh, there is some workers are doing steel works this is steel works that for the weir base then we are still under constructing this weir From the weir, water is diverted into what is known as the headrest canal, which has steel trash racks and a flow control sluice gate to control the flow of water into the canal. The canal is a rectangular shaped reinforced concrete channel, which lies on the excavated slopes on the steep gorge of River Mpanga as it drops down into the bottom of the Rift Valley. Uh, it's long, it's about 1,600 meters. 900 meters, we already done the construction site. Uh, VS Hydro faced many challenges, and basically uh, uh, we have to ensure the stability of the structure um, through the geological investigations. And those are the critical uh, area. We have the critical area uh, like uh, aqueducts, um, tunnel trace and the forebay and the, the penstock part. The forebay or settling tank is a concrete tank that is 10 meters deep and 30 meters long and receives water from the headrest canal. This is the location for the forebay tank. Uh, we, are, we have uh, all the details and uh, drawings. We already complete uh, every 
uh, design and uh, this period uh, we are doing uh, excavation work. It is here that the team of VS Hydro faced a great challenge. Construct the canal with minimal damage to the environment. Conservation of a little known plant, cycad. This particular variety of cycads Whitlock is only found in Uganda and has been on this planet for millions of years. Yeah, because this, uh, this uh, cycad plant which we are having here, it's actually only found in this uh, Panga River. So because of that, it's very important. And this is an endemic plant. And uh, actually, there was a big article on the papers, and they want to preserve this, they preserve this plant. So we are doing, we are putting our full effort to safeguard this plant. From the forebay, the water is transferred to the steel penstock pressure pipe. The water is channeled to the turbine, which is located in the powerhouse. What you see here, this is the penstock part. We bring the water to the powerhouse through the penstock pipes. These are the anchors and anchor support. There are eight numbers of uh, anchors and uh, 20 numbers of uh, anchor supports. The powerhouse will house the turbines and generating equipment for the Mpanga project. It will be a reinforced concrete structure and will house three turbine generator units, each with a capacity of 6 megawatts. It will also contain the plant control system, a switch gear including transformers which shall be located outside the powerhouse. This is the foundation for the powerhouse. Uh, which will house uh, turbine and generating equipment for the project. After leaving the turbine, the water is discharged down a tail race canal back into the river. The Mpanga hydropower plant will take 30 months to construct and the estimated date of completion is June 2010. The government of Uganda, through the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development, the Electricity Regulatory Authority, the Rural Electrification Agency, and the Uganda Electricity Transmission Company Limited, are all working together with VS Hydro to see this project succeed. The Mpanga Hydropower Plant project is already having a positive impact on the people of Kamwenge. They, they have uh, actually transformed the place. Okay. What used to be the wilderness, mm. what used to be uh, just the lift, uh, lift valley and the valley of the uh, uh, gorges. Mm. These days when you go there, mm. it's uh, a developed place because it was difficult to walk there. Mm -hmm. It was difficult to even visit, reach the, the, the river bottom. Mm. But at least now there are channels mm. where one can pass through and uh, we have a hope. Now the road is very good and passable mm -hmm. and actually there is a network of roads and uh, as I can say now at least the place is uh, it can be now a better tourist attraction it can be now uh, it's, uh, they have built some houses it is now uh, there is some uh, planned uh, settlement mm -hmm of staff and uh, the, the other investments, uh, it is a very good uh, investment. And actually, there are several benefits. Yes, yes, the project opened opportunities for employment. I understand they are employing about 140 local people who are involved in the construction works. Of course, that is, means a lot in as far as the economy is concerned. I understand the average wage is about uh, 130,000 and going by that 130,000 times 140 I can see about 18 million going into people's pockets every month besides that we need to have electricity than using charcoal than using firewood than using uh, diesel and the other forms 
of power every, every home. You, 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 the number of lanterns, the candles will reduce in number, then that will even improve and uh, help in managing the climate change. You know, uh, we have to plan for our children in the near future. <laughs> Kapchora district is in eastern Uganda and shares her southern border with Kenya. VS Hydro has located several areas in Uganda as possible sites for mini hydropower plants. One of these areas is Kapchora district. Once a place is identified as a potential site, a feasibility study by surveyors is required. Where the project is located is between Kapchora and Buko districts, which is a in the, the Elgon Mountains of Eastern Uganda. The feasibility study process that I talked about is, is involves the analysis of uh, the flow characteristics of the river in order to be able to determine how much energy we can generate from that uh, river. Behind us, we have uh, a, a bridge at River City, and um, uh, just a few meters below the bridge, something like 30, 50 meters, between 30 and 50 meters, we are going to be having a weir, a, a, a small weir of about two meters to divert the water, not to store water, but to divert water into the canal. And after the diversion of water into the canal, we, the canal will continue down, down slope for about 1.5 kilometers. We meet up with local government officials in Chesoa, the sub-county officers. How much would people's lives change if there was electricity? Yeah, in fact, uh, most of our people are businessmen. And uh, getting power will boost the, the income generating activities. And uh, it, will also support, it will also support the institutions. Because we have the secondary school nearby, we have the health unit, and all this, we, have, we have very many institutions. We are also planning to, to come up with the uh, agro-processing agro factory within the sub county and I think many people will get employment and uh, lives also will have to, to be improved because these services will be these services will be boosted. The second proposed location for another via is on Yalit River. The Kapchora hydropower plant will be fueled by two rivers to provide maximum power. These rivers are River City and Nyaliti. To get a clearer picture on how the project would be on the ground, we had to go higher up the mountain range for a better view. That is the city river. Nyarit runs through this valley. Now, where we are standing, we are about on top of this, beginning of this steep place. And as you can see, it is very steep. That's where we are standing, somewhere there. Mm -hmm. So what is going to happen is that we are trying to bring these two rivers and put a generator power from one powerhouse. After the first power house, which is going to be located around the eucalyptus down in the valley, we will take the water again and you take it talk, into an, another here. canal, yeah. which is uh, Canal 2. This canal will continue from the valley from power house 1, and it will take the water to 4 bay 2, four bay two, four bay two. And then from there, which is in terms of positioning here, Four Betu is behind this hill here, yeah. just behind that hill. And after that, from Four Betu, we will use penny stocks to go down over uh, about 470 meters to powerhouse two. And uh, the total being expected from these two powerhouses is about 25 megawatts. Should VS Hydro's plans go right? they will be able to supply immediate areas with 50 kilowatts of power. From the man who would love to sell cold drinks and run his bar at night, to the children who would be able to go to school because their families have money and because of a successful trade in the village, the standards of living would be greatly improved. Security of employment would encourage people to stay and develop their community. And all of this would be possible because of electricity. Mm -hmm.